Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In today's class we are going to study, product design considerations in casting. We are studying fundamentals of metal casting, and metals for casting. We will cover all related topics one by one. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe, and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects, to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. Product design considerations in casting. In casting, certain guidelines should be followed to facilitate production of the part and avoid many of the defects discussed earlier. These include geometric simplicity, corners, section thicknesses, draft, use of cores, dimensional tolerance and surface finishes, and machining allowances. Number 1. Geometric Simplicity Simplifying the part design will improve its car stability. Avoiding unnecessary complexities simplifies mold making, reduces the need for cause, and improves the strength of the casting. Number 2. Corners Sharp corners and angles should be avoided, because they are sources of stress concentrations and may cause hot tearing and cracks in the casting. Generous fillets should be designed on inside corners, and sharp edges should be blended. Number 3. Section thicknesses. Should be uniform in order to avoid shrinkage cavities. Thicker sections create hot spots in the casting, greater volume requires more time for solidification and cooling. These are likely locations of shrinkage cavities. In the figure A, we can see that a thick section at intersection can result in a shrinkage cavity. Solutions include, the redesign to reduce thickness and use of a core. Number 4. Draft. Drafts are created to aid in removal of the part from the mold. The required draft need only be about 1 degree for sand casting, and 2 degree to 3 degree for permanent mold processes. In the figure A, we can see that a thick section at intersection can result in a shrinkage cavity. Solutions include the redesign to reduce thickness and use of a core. Number 5. Use of cores. Minor changes in part design can reduce the need for coring, as shown in this figures. In the figure A, we can see that a thick section at intersection can result in a shrinkage cavity. Solutions include the redesign to reduce thickness and use of a core. Number 6 is dimensional tolerance and surface finishes. First, let's study. Dimensional Tolerance Depending on the process, there are significant differences in the dimensional accuracies that can be achieved in castings. This table demonstrates typical dimensional tolerances for various casting processes and metals. Let's take this example. When we are casting using cast iron as the material, then for casting small parts, a tolerance of plus minus 1 mm or plus minus 0 0.040 inches, is to be provided on all sides. Again for casting large parts of the same material, a tolerance of plus minus 1.5 millimeters, or plus minus 0 0.060 inches, is to be provided on all sides. Similarly, for other metals also, we can find out the typical dimensional tolerances for various casting processes from this table. After dimensional tolerance comes surface finish. Typical surface roughness achieved in sand casting is around 6 micrometers. Similarly, poor finishes are obtained in shell molding, while plaster mold and investment casting produce much better roughness values of about 0.75 micrometers. Among the permanent mold processes, die casting is noted for good surface finishes at around 1 micrometer. Number 7. Machining allowances. Tolerances achievable in many casting processes are insufficient to meet functional needs in many applications. Sand casting is the worst. So machining is required. Therefore, additional material, called the machining allowance, is left on the casting for machining those surfaces where necessary. Typical machining allowances for sand castings range between 1.5 and 3 mm. So, we have studied product design considerations in casting. Thank you.